Hey guys, Joe Kelly here at Radical Testimony Podcast, coming to you with a really special feature today. We got Mike Franzesi, uh, his testimony at least. Uh, we put some videography in front of it. He's actually the one that inspired Radical Testimony Podcast. Mafia members, gang members, drunks, alcoholics, homeless people, anybody can uh, become saved through the lifeblood of Jesus Christ. So I hope you enjoyed this video that we made. Uh, all this is sponsored by Colorado Roofscapes, Bolt and Flat. Thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoy the show. But I want to be an encouragement to the guys especially, because sometimes you think that you can't get out of a bad situation, okay? I got to tell you, people, I was really going nowhere in life. I really mean it. I mean, what was ready for me was either a bullet, prison for the rest of my life, or death. It was one of the three. That's the way I was going. I got blessed. Because a young woman in my life, the gentleman that was up here, he talked about his wife or his future wife. And believe me, if it wasn't for a young woman, a young Christian woman, I wouldn't be here today. And I met this young girl. She was 20 years old. And I fell in love with her. Because she loved God? No. Because she was beautiful. She came out of a pool. I saw her. I was blown away, right? Bathing suit. The whole bit. I'll be honest with you. I didn't care about God at all. She loved God. Hey, great. But I'm loving you, right? And, um, but I never underestimate the power of a Christian woman, I'll tell you that. I fell very much in love with her, and her mother was a, um, and when I met her, I want to tell you this, I was at the top of my game. I was going to be the boss of the Colombo family. I was bringing in, you know, $10 million a week into my operation. I had a jet plane, a helicopter, house in Florida, house in L.A., house in New York. I'm mob guy all the way. That's all I was interested in doing. I had no interest in God whatsoever. Grew up as a Catholic, but for me, Catholicism was like a, it was like a subject in school. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus through that time. Didn't even know what it was. But through this young woman, I finally started to see that my life was a direct contradiction to what she believed, and I wanted her in my life, but I knew it wasn't going to work. She wasn't ex going to accept it. And you talk about her being in Massachusetts and this fellow being out here. Well, my wife is Mexican. Mexican-American from out here in California. I'm this Italian mob guy from New York. I never even ate a burrito before I met my wife. I didn't know anything about her, right? And she never met an Italian guy. She saw the Godfather once. That was it. So God really hit us out of left field. But uh, I'll tell you what happened, people. It was never on my radar screen ever to walk away from that life. Never. But somehow, for some reason, my love for this woman who's becoming stronger than this lifelong love and I loved and idolized my dad. I do till today. I love him. I don't idolize him, but I love him. It was becoming stronger than that bond. Stronger than the blood oath that I took to La Cosa Nostra. And I did take a blood oath. You shed your blood when you take that oath and come into that life. For some reason. But I realize now that that reason was God. He wanted to get my attention and he did it through that young woman. And talk about hopelessness. When I gave everything up and I walked away from the life, they had immediate contract on my life. My dad disowned me. I had a lot of trouble. The FBI was all over me to become a witness. They said, Mike, you're a dead man anyway. Words all over the street. You can't walk away from that life. Cooperate with us. We'll put you in a witness protection program. We'll preserve your life and that of your families. I didn't want to do that. I wasn't looking to hurt anybody. I just wanted out of the life. They gave me a rough time, people, for 10 years. I was literally dodging bullets, dodging the feds, in and out of prison. My wife and I couldn't put a house in our name, no utilities. We really had a rough time. And I always say this, I'm not the story here. I brought this all on myself. My wife is the story. The baggage I brought to that young girl's marriage at 21 years old. Believe it, I don't know how she stayed with me. And I really believe that if God wasn't in the foundation of our marriage, we wouldn't have made it together. It was too tough. I put her through too much stuff. And I love the Lord for keeping her in my life because I love her until today. We're married going on 28 years this year. Amen. So, one night, I had a real bad night, people. I'm in a jail cell, and I thought I lost everything. And I, and I will tell you this, I know how some of these guys feel. I have felt every emotion you can feel in life from ecstasy right down to grief and everything in between. I've lived a pretty full life. But by far, the worst emotion you could ever experience in your life is hopelessness. That's it. When you feel you've lost everything that's dear to you, 
when you're in this deep dark hole and nothing you can do you can get yourself out okay it is the worst feeling in the world I used to laugh at people that were suicidal shame on me suicidal come on you're weak can't face what's going on in life I don't laugh anymore I get it I wasn't suicidal on this particular night but if I could have closed my eyes and not woke up again I would have wanted that. It was too painful to me. My heart was coming out of my chest. My head was pounding. I wish I had never known my wife because I figured I'd never see her again in, in my life. My kids. I wish I never had kids at that point in time. And I was angry with God. Why? Because I had accepted Christ. My wife and my mother will accept Jesus. He'll forgive your sins. Well, really? I want some of that. What do I have to do? I'm a sinner. Get on my knees. Say a prayer. You know, really try to feel it. Yeah, I did all of that. But did I surrender to Jesus at, the, at that point? No. Why? I'm a mob guy. Mob guys don't surrender. Maybe to the court to get a better sentence, but I'm not surrendering. You know, that's wimpy. God helps those who help themselves. Contradiction to what's in the Bible. I believe that your acceptance of Jesus is made whole in your surrender to him because that's when the Lord can start to work through you. When you give it up and you say, hey God, I'm going your way. You lead me, I'll follow. Well, that night, I decided to give it up to Jesus. You know why? I had no choice. I was desperate. But our Lord will take you any way that he can get you. And that night, I gave it up to him. I said, God, I got no other way to go. I'm going to give you a shot at this. They told me I was going to spend the rest of my life in prison like that other fella up there. They had a big racketeering case they were going to put against me. And I was done. I was a three-time loser at that point. For some reason, the case fell apart. Never indicted me. They did violate my parole. I got four years on the violation. I spent 35 months and 13 days in prison, 29 months and seven days in the hole, 24 seven me and God. And you know what people? He saved my life during that time. Because if I was on the street, I would have never focused on him. I read my Bible inside out and upside down. I know my Bible, I don't quote verses, I'm not that smart, but I know my Bible, I've read it a thousand times, and I continue to read it. Read over 400 books, learned everything that I could learn about Jesus, and that's when I developed my relationship with him, and if I was talking for the next hour, it would be all about a relationship with Jesus, because that's what life is all about, people, a relationship with our Lord and Savior.